the God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What a joy it is to celebrate this glorious occasion with all of you here. What a privilege it is to be here in this beautiful church, made even more lovely than usual. The lights, the trees, the greens, and the flowers. I go back and forth each year as to what my favorite holiday is, Christmas or Easter. The good thing is you can't go wrong with either one. One of my favorite parts of both Christmas and Easter is the music. I'm certainly not above that. In fact, Christmas carols are beloved by people around the world, people of all faiths, and people who do not identify with faith at all. Now, I guess that if we poll the room full of people about their favorite Christmas carol, we would get almost as many answers as there are people. Today, I want to share with you the backstory of one of the most beloved carols, Silent Night, because this hymn that hundreds of people, hundreds of millions of people, even billions of people around the world know by heart, has actually a very humble origin. The author of the poem the hymn is based on is Joseph Moore, a 19th century Austrian priest, and Moore himself had a very humble origin. He was the illegitimate son of a single mother an unmarried embroiderer whose partner deserted both her and the army before their baby was born. In 1816, a grown-up Joseph was newly ordained and serving his first post as a priest in a small town outside of Salzburg. His supervisor noted that he needed to be a little more diligent in his priestly duties and accused him of frequenting drinking locales, joking with persons of the opposite sex, and singing songs which do not edify, probably bar songs, pub songs. He sounds kind of like a fun guy, but uh, I guess uh, somewhat scandalous. But despite the censure of his mentor, Joseph was a caring pastor to the people of his parish who were traumatized by the social and ecological events going on outside their control. You see, Europe was still reeling from more than a decade of the Napoleonic Wars, which had ended only the year before, in 1815. And added to that, this year, 1816, witnessed terrifying changes in the natural world. A year earlier, one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions ever recorded took place halfway across the globe in Indonesia, and it produced months of climate disruption all over the world. In fact, in Europe, 1816 was known as the year without a summer, as volcanic ash spread across, across the globe and caused frequent storms and record cold temperatures. It even snowed. Crops were destroyed, and people all over Europe, including Moore's little town, were suffering from poverty and hunger. Moore wanted to speak a word of hope into this unstable time this unstable time, and one day he found his inspiration when he visited the family from his parish. The young wife and mother had just given birth, and despite the poverty of her home and the uncertainty of the world around her family, the new parents were full of joy, so full of joy, these two young parents and their newborn child. Of course, it made him think of another such couple and their child. And he went home that evening and wrote down the words to steal a knot, silent night. Two years later, Moore's organist friend, Franz Gruber, would set the poem to music, and the two of them debuted it on Christmas Eve at a church named St. Nicholas. The rest is history. I share this story because sometimes it can be easy to forget that Christmas is a story of hope for those on the margins. Amidst all the glorious fanfare, festivities, Christmas can seem triumphalist. If you're not one of the lucky ones, if you're mourning, if you're in pain, if you're sad, if you're economically hurting, is Christmas 
for you, you might wonder. If you're not feeling the holiday spirit, if you're puzzled at what to celebrate, is Christmas for you? Is Christmas for the people of Ukraine suffering in a bully dictator's unprovoked war? Is Christmas for those around the world who experience climate change disruptions? Is Christmas for people who experience gun violence in their streets, even here in our own community of Asbury Park? Is Christmas for those who struggle with substance abuse disorders, with depression, with other mental illnesses? Is Christmas for you? Is Christmas for me? Is Christmas really for any of us? Yes, emphatically yes, without reservation, yes. Christmas is for everyone. Yes, it's true, Christmas is for those who rejoice, for the boisterous, for the lucky, for the innocent, for the children. Christmas is indeed for those who've never doubted its magic. But I believe Christmas is even more vital for those who need hope. If Christmas seems triumphalist, it's because Christmas is triumphant. But it's a story of triumph meant more for the marginalized than the winners of the world. This is a story, after all, that begins with the people oppressed under the heel of imperial occupation and moves to one particular family, a working class family, the husband and father, a craftsman, the young wife and mother, pregnant under questionable circumstances. They're on the move, and there's no place for them in the end. So they sleep among the animals, just like the shepherds who come to visit them. Shepherds among the lowliest in society, and yet following the footsteps of the great patriarchs, Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Leah, Rachel. And don't forget about Moses, the slave turned prince, turned exile, turned deliverer of his people. And don't forget David either, the youngest shepherd boy of his family, no greatness expected of him, but anointed as the future king. And no one would have expected greatness from this baby. We celebrate tonight this baby sleeping in a manger, surrounded by the animals. And yet, he would become a savior to the powerless and the powerful. In this newborn king, a new world was born. And the heavenly host proclaimed the glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace and goodwill toward humankind. In this newborn child, we see a world remade in the image of God's love, peace, and justice. And yet, we look around, and the world is not fully at peace. God's love and justice do not rule the day for everyone. How then can we place our trust in the Savior? Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Christmas is when we celebrate the mystery of incarnation. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the incarnation of Jesus Christ, God became human so that we might become divine. Emmanuel, God with us, joins us in our moments of hopelessness and hopeless and hopefulness. This is not a savior who waves a magic wand and makes everything better. Rather, this is a savior who acts through the mighty force of love. This love is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This love is the light that begins with the flame of a single candle, then multiplies until it resembles the stars in the night sky. And then when morning comes, it is the brightness of the sun shining down its warmth on us all. The love of Christ grows as it is shared. God becomes human so that we might become divine. In Christ, God shares his love with us all. 
as one of us. And then we are invited to share that love with one another. We follow in sharing Christ's light when we participate in the love of Christ. As we open ourselves up to experience that love, and then as we share that love with one another. This is the power of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the triumph of Christmas. Hope, light, love. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, thy birth. Jesus, Lord, thy birth. Christmas is for you. Wherever you find yourself this year, in your joys and in your sorrows, love's pure light shines radiant beams from the face of the Holy One to all of us as we meet the dawn of the stable-born king's redeeming grace. Christmas is for all of us, no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, and no matter where we're going. Because God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us, all of us. And God is within us. All of us. And God is among us. All of us. God is among us as we share the love of Christ with one another and all the world. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen.